Hey, I'm Eric. Thanks to everybody who submitted their comments about polarized light. Some people had a go at figuring out what was happening at the end of the video with turning polarizers in order to get different colors. Several people talked about how different colors of light are refracted by different amounts, which is something I talked about in the video. I think actually the solution that I've come up with, and it may be totally incorrect, and it's, it's just my, my best guess at it, is really about how much light gets polarized. I apologize for my change in appearance. I had to shave my beard in order to prove that this video was made after the previous one so that you knew I didn't have my solution totally worked out before making that first video to make it a little bit more fair. It was a pretty difficult challenge for a couple of reasons. Number one, it'd be actually a little bit difficult to replicate without getting exactly the same materials. There are a couple of things that uh, are, are hint, I think, at the right solution, at least as far as the best one that I've been able to figure out. I could be totally wrong. Feel free to poke holes in my explanation or come up with a better one. So there was one part you'll remember I talked about microwaves and how the distance between the conductive elements within the polarizer need to be roughly the same distance apart as the kind of light that you're trying to filtering or they can actually be closer together, that's not a problem. And remember I demonstrated that by blocking radio waves with the grid that's on the front of a microwave. The gap between the conductive molecules needs to be about the same size or a little bit smaller than the wavelength of the light that we're trying to filter. And I also said that the linear polarizers that I'm using are pretty low quality. So I think one of the critical elements here is that those conductive lines in the linear polarizers are at a distance apart that's roughly within the range of the visible light spectrum. They're probably a few hundred nanometers apart. In order to explain what's happening, I've actually devised a new sort of notation or diagram for describing rays of light. So until someone cures my ignorance and shows me where these already exist or comes up with a better name, we'll call them uh, Michelson polarization diagrams. All right, so what I'm, what I'm just gonna do is draw a point and then I'm gonna draw a somewhat circular-ish shape around that point. Okay, not really important how good or terrible of an artist I am. So here the different points around the circle just represent different polarizations. We, we can even label it. We can say here are zero degrees, and here's 90 degrees, and here's 180 degrees, and here's 270 degrees over here. Um, and these are just different polarizations of light, and so we can just use different regions of the diagram to talk about some other property of light and how it's distributed across the different polarizations of light. So, um, presumably, coming into our first linear polarizer, we have just white light. And I think what's happening is, um, and this was kind of given away as I was putting the polarizers on. It's very... Different colors of light are getting polarized by different amounts. So uh, to simplify things a little bit, we're going to talk about different colors of light separately going into a linear polarizer. Um, so presumably what this polarizer does, and let's start with blue light, is limit the blue light to certain polarizations. So we are going to have some blue light here. We have our uh, linear, our first linear polarizer oriented so that the blue light is polarized mostly vertically. So this diagram is always going to be radially symmetrical. Uh, the top is going to match the bottom, left is going to match the right. Uh, rotate it around no matter what we do. So we could probably get away with just drawing the top half only. So that's what happens to the blue light. So then when we switch to green light, we want to talk about what happens to that. So I'm going to layer on the green uh, additively. Green plus blue is kind of cyan. And because the green light has a lower frequency, it has a longer wavelength, the linear polarizer will do a better job of polarizing it. There will be more of it closer to zero and 180 degrees. That means there's a region on the edge that's dominated by blue light. There's almost no green light in it. We're going to switch to red light now. Red light is exactly the same story. It has an even longer wavelength for adding our red on top of our green on top of our blue. We get white light. If you can imagine, even more gradient to this. There's other colors in between, obviously, um, and there's kind of a a sort of blue rainbow happening. And even beyond these areas, in these dark 
uh, these black areas, uh, the same thing is happening to ultraviolet light, um, all the way to gamma radiation, the really high energy, really short wavelength light is barely getting polarized at all. It's barely getting pulled away from 90 degrees and 270 degrees. Uh, and most of it's just blasting right through the uh, linear polarizer. And that's just sort of a function of the size and the pitch between the conductive elements in that filter. You can imagine a higher quality filter. We'll just switch to a new fresh diagram like I'm imagining a photo quality filter uh, like the one that you might see in a camera. You're going to get a much tighter grouping of light and presumably you're going to have your elements much closer together. Almost none of the light in your image is going to be shifted in color because of the polarizer at any particular polarization it's going to be a very steep cutoff. You see, if we, if we put these filters on top of one another and we turn them 90 degrees, then we're getting almost no light through because these light areas don't match up at all anymore where light can make it through. Um, the one filter is polarizing it and then it's getting, getting reflected off the second polar, polarizer uh, almost completely. But if you put them at an angle, like you saw in the video, you get blue light coming through and that's because the blue light was less polarized when coming through the cheap filter. The the light at about you know 30 degrees is mostly blue light and then the second filter acts as a selector to only give you the light that was at that polarization already for the most part. The other polarizations of light uh, get reflected more so it's over selecting for blue light which is why uh, at that angle it looked really blue through the two filters. You can imagine as you're pushing them closer together, at some point you're going to get to a point where um, you're getting most of the different colors of light and you've gotten past the part of the gradient that's in the visible spectrum and now uh, you're probably getting less infrared light coming into the camera. Doesn't make any difference. Uh, that's fine. We know maybe we're, we're, the polarizer is causing less infrared to get into the camera doesn't make any difference. It looks exactly the same to the human eye. Okay, so that explains how the two polarizers work together. By partially opposing the two filters, we're essentially just creating a slit where only a particular polarization of light is able to get through. In the regular light around the room that you were able to see, you got all different kinds of polarizations of my skin, of the white from the background, etc. So there's no color bias there and they're all able to travel through this slit. With the cheapo filter, you have different amounts of light at different polarizations coming out of the filter that I was holding in my hand. Purplish light is somewhere around 45 or more degrees away from center as you approach 90 degrees. So you can imagine there's even more purple light farther out towards 90 degrees and 270 degrees. And by making that part of the filter, that polarization, aimed at that slit, you were able to see just the purple light coming through. And as I moved the polarizer back, you could see more different colors because um, you're going through the gradient and then I turn a little more and then green light and then a little more than yellow light and those get added together uh, and then when I've gone all the way back it looks a little bit red-ish the other colors of light have been scattered a little bit more by the filters so the so the two filters are able to act as a sort of selector instead of just getting random light in they're getting light that has particular polarizations and particular amounts of color by polarizing and then polarizing again they're able to select out particular colors. So cheaper filters that'll be easy for you to get your hands on will have these wider color polarization gradients. It should be easy for you to line up a few of them and see if you can replicate those results. Thanks again uh, to everybody who showed interest in my first video. I've got a really small YouTube channel, but thanks to you, it's uh, growing pretty quickly. Uh, but now is a great opportunity for you if there's something that you want to see if there's something you're curious about let me know in the comments what you'd be interested in seeing and thanks for watching